beautiful fall day. Uh, I don't know whether I'm receiving prophetic dreams, but I kind of hope that I'm not, because last night I dreamt that I woke up and I went down to let the dog out, and there was seven feet of snow. His grace, God's love and forgiveness. We rejoice today as we celebrate with the family of Lydia, who will come to the waters of baptism to become God's new creation and to enter into that, that love and joy that God has for all of us, but especially for Lydia and for the family God with you today. Just a very quick word of uh, instruction. Uh, we celebrate Holy Communion today. We have many visitors with us, uh, so I will try to say just a little bit about how we do that. All are welcome to come to the Lord's table. Jesus Christ himself is the host, and he offers himself to us. Uh, we, we start on this side, so you guys are lucky that you started here, you get to come up first, we have the duty. Uh, at the very first station you will find a piece of bread, which you are invited to take. At the second station, if you prefer grape juice, it's been three boards for you. If you would rather have a, cu a cup of wine, take an empty glass. At the third station, the third person will pour a glass of wine for you, and then we invite you to place your empty glass on that side and return to your pew. Don't worry, we'll take it through. God is gracious, God is good, God invites us to come into His presence now in worship, and we begin our worship with our need for God's forgiveness. So please rise with me and join in the brief order for confession and forgiveness. We gather for worship today as we live our lives in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we might perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. With that wonderful promise, let's come before God now in confession.
Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's keep saying it's a great thing to do. It's a good way to praise God. Let's join together. As with you. Paul, 
an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience, as my ancestors did, when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that lived first in your grandmother Louise and mother Enus, and now, I am sure, lives in you. For this reason I remind you to rekindle the gift of God as within you through the laying on my hand, of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and love and self-discipline. Do not be ashamed, then, of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on, relying on the power of God, who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but has now been revealed through the appealing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel I was appointed a herald, and an apostle and a teacher, and for this reason I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The word of the Lord. It's an interesting contrast, I think, in some respect, between those two readings that we've heard from Lamentation, the book that we don't uh, hear very often, and certainly probably not one that we would turn to uh, often in our scripture reading. Uh, just to let you know, the very Lamentations is the, is the English name given to that title. In Hebrew, it's one word, how. Of the heart to God. How could this happen? A people who are, are being taken from their homes, taken from their nation, feeling deserted and alone. Most of the time we don't feel that way, and I think thanks to God that like, uh, life is generally pretty good for us here in Canada, but there are times when we can feel pretty desolate, when we can feel pretty uh, alone, or like life is being sucked from us. If you feel that way right now, or if you ever do, remember this song that we're about to join together in. This is the cry of a nation who have lost everything. We sit down and weep together. And strangely, in that sharing together of sorrow and loss, they are strengthened because they give it over to God, who is strong and can take them through. Wherever you are in your life, I pray that you are being comforted and strengthened, that you are experiencing joy, but if you are not, join your heart now in Psalm 137. Let us join our voices. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, and there we wept, when we remembered Zion. On the willows, there we hung up our hearts, for there our actors asked us for songs, and our tormentors asked us for words, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand wither. Let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not remember you, if I do not set Jerusalem above my eyes to all, fear and kiss off. Amen. This time, anybody who would like to join me up here at the front, I invite you to come on down. Good morning, you guys are going to have to make your way around the font here and find a place to sit, either on the steps or wherever you'd like. You guys find a place where you can see and hear. Hello. Good morning. Good to see you guys. How are you doing? You want to find a place right there, actually. Good. Thanks for joining me up here, you guys. Nice to see you all. God bless you today. Good to be here. I wonder, can you guys see what I've got here in my hand? Pickles? You guys like pickles? Yeah? You know, every now and then, uh, I'll come into the kitchen maybe and I'll say, I feel like a snack, or I'm making a sandwich and 
uh, I love pickles. And you get a brand new jar of pickles, and maybe you've seen this happen to your mommy or your daddy or your grandma or grandpa or something, and I'll reach in the fridge, brand new jar of pickles, and I'll go, And I can't get it open. You ever seen that happen? And my face gets red and my veins are popping out and I'm like, and I'll give it over to Heather and she'll just
So you also, when you have done all that you were ordered to do, should say, we are worthless slaves. We have done only what we ought to have done. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the congregation to be seated. Friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, the other day, um, I had a busy week, and so often I, I have to think about my sermon uh, at various times of, of the day, and I was thinking about it while I was shaving. Uh, and, you know, I really got into it a little bit, and I wasn't really focusing too much on what I was doing, and once you know it, I gave myself a pretty good little net. Uh, and I came out, uh, and I said to Heather, you know what, I was uh, thinking too much about my sermon, and I cut my face. And she looked at me, and she said, you know what, you should probably think more about your face and cut your sermon. <laughs> She wishes she was that way. So, I, I, I may cut my sermon a little bit. We have a full service today. We have many things going on. Uh, we'll see where the Lord takes me. Because I did have a busy week, and uh, I will confess to you that sometimes that means I don't give the proper time and attention to the sermon. So you can come up to me afterwards and say, wow, Pastor, that one was a, that was a real dog today. Or, or I, I hope to say, wow, the Lord spoke through you. It wasn't you, Pastor, that's pretty sure. But the, the Spirit was speaking. And I, I pray that the Spirit does guide us always in our worship. And lead us. Because we get some challenging, I, I know I've been saying this, I think almost every Sunday that we come together, that throughout the fall, as we work our way through the Gospel of Luke, we get some tough, tough readings. We get some challenging things, right? Uh, and, and probably, I hope maybe you caught it in our Gospel reading today, our heart should be crying out the same thing that the apostles were saying to the Lord. As he's given them all these teachings, they finally say, wow, Lord, you're going to have to increase our faith. You're going to have to build us up. To do the things that you are calling us to do, this is tough stuff. This is challenging. Forgive my brother, not just seven times, but 77 times, seven times. I can't even do the math. They didn't have calculators back then. The Lord is saying, you must continually be forgiving. You must build reconciliation. And I hope that there is some encouragement in our gospel today. I hope it's not just a burden that gets dropped on our shoulders and we think, okay, now I've got to be even stronger in my faith, right? The pickle jar. I've got to keep working and working and working it. That it's all about me. Because the good news in that reading today is that the apostles are looking to Jesus, saying, we can't do it, Lord. You're going to have to do it in us. You are going to have to give us the gift of faith. You are going to have to nurture it. You are going to have to pull us back to yourself and remind us that you love us. That you actually went and died for us. That that's the depth of your love. That it's not just... You know, that you like us and you think we're pretty good people or whatever else. You said, I will suffer and die on your behalf so that you might know you are loved. We need to hear that. That's the good news we're going to proclaim over little Lydia very shortly. That God loves her with an unending love. With a love that he would be willing to die for her so that she might know she is God's child. That's the basis of of the faith that we proclaim. And it is a good thing that Lydia is in this world. I, I hope you as parents know that, that you are celebrating this wonderful gift you have been given, uh, that you know, when she cries and wakes you up at 3 in the morning, you say, thank you, God, right on. All right, maybe you're not quite there yet. Most of us aren't. Uh, but it is a good thing that she's in this world. If you've ever seen uh, the movie A Wonderful Life, it's one of those classics, probably just about everybody's seen that one. If you haven't, rent it come Christmas time, right? Harry, Harry I want to say Harry Bailey. That's not really his name, was it? I, I don't remember what his name is. Jimmy Stewart character, uh, right? He, he, he's depressed, he's despondent, he wants to kill himself and end his life, and, and, and God gifts him with an angel that shows him how the world would have been different had he not been a part of it. Think about that. God, who gave you life, you did nothing to create your own life. Let's be honest about that, right? You are solely God's creation, and God has given you that gift. And he gave you that gift so that you could be a gift to the world. So that you could bless it. The people around you, people at your work, people at your school, your family, your friends, your neighbors, whoever it is. That's challenging stuff, right? Because sometimes they make us nuts. And you live in this city, uh, you're probably at least once a day, if you're driving anywhere, you're cursing, if not completely out loud, under your breath, at somebody who's driving. Right? And, and, and that kind of anger, that kind of rage is not... 
know, we excuse it, we say it's no big deal, but that can fester, that can grow, that becomes patterns of how we view other people around us, rather than seeing them too as a gift from God, or thinking, you old so-and-so, you cut me off, rather than saying, God bless you, and this is tough stuff, I'm not, I'm not getting around, this is, this is a part of what faith wants to engender within us, a way of seeing the world that is completely new and different, that sees everybody as, as the potential of being a gift in my life, as I learn to, to offer God's grace to them, and to be joyous around them, and to be a peacemaker, and a peace giver, in whatever way is necessary. This is challenging. And we do pray. Increase that within us, Lord. It doesn't come to us natural. Lord, you know it. We need your help. We need your strength. But when we honestly come to our Savior, Jesus Christ, He begins to build that in us. It is an amazing thing. And you, I know so many of you here can tell stories of the ways in which you said, I saw the Lord working in my life. It wasn't me, man. I didn't have the words to, to offer to that person who was dying, to that person who was struggling, that person who was weeping. But somehow, somehow there was comfort in that moment that we shared together. And I know that was the work of the Spirit. Somehow. Rejoice in that. Tell those stories to one another. And we've got this wonderful, we have this wonderful tradition. We have this wonderful message in the church. 2,000 years of stories of people of faith changing the world. Doing remarkable things. Sometimes huge things that the world still remembers. And, and more often than not, tiny little things. Mustard seed things. So small you might almost miss it. And yet, they move mountains. They move mulberry trees. I don't know, that's probably not a reference that means a big deal to us. Uh, but go home and Google mulberry trees, and you will see that this was a kind of tree that had an incredibly extensive root system. Uh, and the Hebrews had a, had a saying that if you wanted to uh, uproot, dig up all the roots of a mulberry tree, it would take you 600 years. That's how extensive their root system was. And you know what, we look at the world and it looks like sin has got its roots pretty deeply sunk into this creation that God has made. And we see death and we see destruction, we see poverty, we see hunger, we see hatred, we see intolerance, we see unkindness. And it can look like the root system is pretty massive. But you know what, God planted a different tree on this creation and he said these roots are even deeper. This reconciles this creation to myself and nothing will change that. I have covered it in the blood of Jesus Christ and nothing can overpower that. I uproot trees, God says, and I invite you too to be an uprooter, to take that mustard seed of faith that you have in your heart and to go into this world and find those trees and uproot them. And to remind you, I'm going to end with a little song. I don't know the whole song, and I'm going to try and sing it. I'll probably butcher it a little bit, but that's all right. That'll make it stick in your head a little bit more. And maybe you've heard this song, and if you know it, you can join in on the chorus if you want to, but I think it speaks a little bit of the gospel. I think it speaks about the, the incredible hope that should be living in our heart because of what Christ has done for us. It goes like this. Just what makes that little old ant think he'll move that rubber tree plant? Everyone knows an ant can't move a rubber tree plant, but he's got high hopes. He's got high hopes. He's got high apple pie in the sky of hopes. God can move rubber tree plants. God can move mulberry trees. God can remove sin and death and loss and all things. And so we should have high hopes. Amen. Well, my fellow ants, let us rise. Let us rejoice in what God has done and continues to do in our midst as we join in our hymn of the day today, which is baptized and set free.
provides. I would invite the congregation to be seated at this time. I would invite the baptismal party to come forward, asking them to bring their three hymnals with them. And if you would like to follow along with our service of baptism, you can take your green book. You'll find it in the pew holder in front of you. Uh, and in the front part of it, not in the song part, which is towards the back, but the front part, page 121. Page 121 in the front part of the green hymnal, you'll find our service of baptism. Brothers and sisters, in holy baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father liberates us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity. In the waters of baptism, we are reborn children of God and inheritors of eternal life. By water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the Church, which is the body of Christ. And as we live with Him and with His people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. So first I ask, who presents this child to receive the sacrament of holy baptism? Thank you. Christian love, you have presented this child for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring her to the services of God's house, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As she grows in years, you should strive to place in her hands the Holy Scriptures, provide for her instruction in the Christian faith, so that living in the covenant of her baptism and in communion with the church, she may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. And so I ask, do you promise to fulfill these obligations? If so, please respond, we do. Congregation, brothers and sisters, please rise with us. Now on the bottom of page 122. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we do give you thanks this day, for in the beginning your Spirit moved over the waters, and you create heaven and earth. And by the gift of water you nourish and sustain us and all living things. By the waters of the flood you condemn the wicked, and you save those whom you have chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by a pillar of cloud and fire through the sea, out of slavery and into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with his Holy Spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death, and he has opened to us the way that leads to everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom and of cleansing and rebirth. And therefore, in obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, so we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit, so that Lydia, here baptized, may be given a new life. Wash away her sin as she is cleansed by this water, and bring her forth as an inheritor of your glorious kingdom. For to you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. At this time, I would ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church, which is the faith in which we baptize. And so, sponsors and parents, I ask you first, do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, with all of his empty promises? If so, please respond, we do. And now I invite you, community, to join your hearts and your voices too. For I ask, do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. But do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time I would invite you to bring the video program to receive baptism.
Lydia and Larry May. I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. congregation may be seated, and I would ask the baptismal party to come to the front here in this space meeting. Now we are on page 124. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, you are the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. We do give you thanks, for you free your sons and daughters from the power of sin, and you raise them up to a new life through this holy sacrament. And so do we ask that you would pour your Holy Spirit upon Lydia, a spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and might, a spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and a spirit of joy now and always in your presence. Amen. Lydia, Clary May, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Now, daughter of God, we pray that you would let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Amen. No, and now I've filled your head. All right, I'd invite you just to get close to him. If you would place a hand upon the shoulder here and let us pray for these parents. Lord God, you are the giver of all life, and so we ask that you would look with kindness upon the father and mother of this child. Let them ever rejoice in the gift whom you have given to them. Make them teachers and examples of righteousness for this child. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with this child the salvation you have given them and us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now would your family turn and face your brothers and sisters. Please rise with me and let us join together welcoming this new daughter of God.
continue to worship God through the collection of our offerings. Quick word about our offering. We do offer uh, uh, gifts to God through our financial resources. We pray that it will be a blessing to the community. Today there is a special offering that you can participate in if you would like. It's called Looney Sunday. Doesn't mean go crazy unless you want to with your pocketbook. Absolutely. God bless you for that. But it goes to support campus ministry. Any loose change put into our offerings by today will go to benefit campus ministry.
Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gift of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite the congregation to be seated.
Would the congregation please rise? <coughs> and now, may the body and the blood of our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. <coughs> we give you thanks, Almighty God, for you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, brothers and sisters, I invite you to receive the benediction of my Lord. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This time I would invite the congregation to be seated one more time, and I would ask if there are any announcements to be lifted up. Obviously, coming next week, and if you've got some extra garden produce, bring it, uh, and we'll make sure we've got a wonderful display up there at the front to reflect God's goodness to us. Peter, yes. Good morning, everybody. October the 10th is going to be the annual Power Breakfast. Now, if anybody is interested in attending, it's going to be at 7.30 in the morning. It's a fantastic buffet for breakfast. And if you're interested in coming, let Yvonne know. Um, when is the deadline, Yvonne? Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, if you should let Yvonne know by Wednesday that she can make reservations if you're interested in coming. They're raising money to uh, renovate the Richmond Room at uh, Luther Heights, I believe. So, um, come on on and we'll make a Trinity table like we do every year. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. In support of Luther Care for Communities, uh, a variety of uh, care homes uh, being operated by the uh, Lutheran umbrella. Peter is our representative. Thank you for that. I hope Peter gives an announcement, man. He wakes you up. Thank you, Peter, for that. Um, we also have our own event happening uh, from Trinity, Oktoberfest, coming at the end of the month. You will see that uh, you can purchase tickets uh, for 10 o'clock. Ten dollars for adults, uh, five for those uh, five to twelve. Children under five can come for free. That's October twenty-sixth. We, uh, we do it up at the Anglican Church, so we get a little more space. If you'd like to come and be a part of that evening, uh, please talk to myself or to Alice uh, or to Yvonne or to Stephen Langhorn. We will uh, sell you tickets quite happily, and we'll come together a wonderful evening of food, fellowship, dancing. Uh, just a really good time. We hope that you can come. Once again, God blessings uh, to you, and thank you for bringing so many people. We pray that you are blessed as you have joined us today for worship, that you will go in peace, that you will rejoice in this gift you have. You did so well. Wonderful. Thank you, and God's best blessings upon Lydia today. Uh, one last word of thank you to those who came together yesterday to uh, complete the painting on our A-frame. Quite a task. Uh, we've got a wonderful picture they showed me uh, uh, of the lift. It went up, I think, 40 feet, and they took a great shot of the city. And we're going to try to put that up on our overhead so that, that you can see what the view would be like if you went up stood on top of our church and viewed all the that you can see from there. Uh, thank you to those who gave their time in that way. We also want to celebrate with those who celebrate this upcoming week. Uh, Ann and Grace Bueller will celebrate their anniversary. God's blessings to you. And our birthdays are Lisa Mullen, Barb Jerica, uh, Ryan Ontario, and Eileen Dalkey. Let's join together wishing them a happy birthday. Yeah.